your hand out Demanding that I pay The money that I work for At least that's what you say But what gives you that power? Who died and made you boss? I'm barely getting by today I can't afford that loss So if you don't show some legal obligation that I pay Put your hand back in your pocket Well, hello there. I'm Hartwell Broussard and I welcome you to HELP, the program with help and a request for help. The reason help is needed is because America is in distress. If you notice in the background the American flag is displayed upside down. When a flag is displayed upside down it is done so as a distress signal. If you wish to confirm that, go to the United States Code, Title 36, Chapter 10, Paragraph 176A. My goal is to help you to understand why America is in distress. And hopefully you will do something to help get us out of this dire situation that we are in. For this program I will be helping you by showing you part Two, which is the final part of a video entitled The Sheriff. But before going into that, I'm wondering, do you know what your sheriff would do if he was ordered to disarm the people of his county or parish? You need to find out. Go to your sheriff and ask him if federal agents ordered him to disarm the people of his county or parish, would he follow orders? You need to find out. I'll tell you something else. Here is a picture of a revolver with the barrel tied in a knot at UN headquarters in New York City. If your sheriff was ordered by UN officials to disarm you and everyone else in his county or parish, would he follow orders? You need to find out. Go and ask your sheriff. Ask him what he would do if he was ordered to disarm the people of his county or parish. Understand that in the 20th century, 200 million people were murdered by their own governments. Governments do not make people safe. Governments make people dead. Look again. This is a revolver with the barrel tied in a knot at UN headquarters in New York City. Look good at it. If they want to take your revolver away from you, I can guarantee you, they want to take your high-powered deer gun away from you, and they want to take your devastating duck gun away from you. The United Nations wants to disarm everyone here in America, actually worldwide. What will your sheriff do if he is ordered to disarm you and everyone else? Think about it while you watch part two of this video entitled The Sheriff. Daily, we educate our police and soldiers and we get many hateful letters from our brothers and sisters in uniform too, where they'll say nasty things, you guys are revolutionaries, you guys are anti-government, uh, but I love the letters that always end and say, if this is true, prove it. Because of course we can. Sure. We've got 17 filing cabinets, not drawers, cabinets filled with every bit of documentation to prove to any hard-headed police officer, soldier, or any private citizen exactly the, the facts and the right. evidence to prove everything that you've said on this show and that we say in our publications. Yeah. 
day, Dennis, I say praise God Almighty that we have more police and soldiers realizing, like we didn't 20 years ago, that we, by violating people's rights, uh, by doing everything government tells us to do, usurping the power and the rights of the people to government, we are building a socialist slave system for my three kids and seven grandkids. Yeah. And so many police and soldiers today are seeing that and saying, wait a minute, I know I want my pension. I know that I should shut down, be quiet, and not make waves, and I should do exactly what I'm told because mm -hmm. I might lose my pension or I might be persecuted and ostracized. But they balance the freedom of their own children and their posterity to standing up and speaking out. And guess what? The, it's, it's, they find that it's, of course, their choice to stand up and speak out against uh, despotism right. and usurpation of the people's rights. Right. So this is a wonderful time to see many joining us today mm -hmm. that didn't 10 years ago because they couldn't see that this can happen in America. Well, it is happening. The Office of Sheriff, Shire Reeve. Now, Shire Reeve is keeper of the county, Old English. That, that, right. in, in the... Uh, in Britain a thousand years ago, uh, the uh, sheriff was called the Shire Reeve or the keeper of the county. Keeper of the yes. county. Okay, the office of sheriff, Shire Reeve, characterized in Anderson on sheriff's corners and constables as one of the oldest offices known to the common law system of jurisprudence, originated in medieval England. The offer, office is certainly the oldest county office in the United States, even older than the position of Justice of the Peace with over a thousand year history. The office is truly a constitutional and common law office. There we are. It originated out of common law. No and so what you're saying is, if they elect you, you need to find out what they want and provide that. That's your job is to provide what they need. And Absolutely, and, and, and certainly to protect and, and certainly to protect their property and their rights and uh, uh, those various things that uh, uh, that the sheriff uh, should be doing. Mm -hmm. happened here now, is so unusual. This man was elected five times and correct me if I'm wrong, stood up, raised his right hand, swore an oath to the Constitution of the United States and the state of Nevada to protect against all enemies, foreign and domestic, yes. as do all sheriffs that are elected into office. But you took it a step further. You actually do it. Oh, yes. That's the difference. Because, like I say, I've read the Constitution and... I've watched what a lot of sheriffs have done or not done, and they do not uphold that oath. They do not uphold the oath to defend the Constitution of the United States or the Constitution of the state of Nevada. And, but you're doing it, and you're not really appreciated for your talents by outside government agencies, are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, uh, I think that I'm, uh, uh, looked at as uh, somewhat of a, uh, uh, a rabble rouser or uh, uh, the, the, uh, the person, a malcontent yeah. maybe uh, uh, by some of the federal agencies. And that's not to say all of them either, to be absolutely fair. But uh, certainly um, I'm looked at with disdain by some of those federal agencies, particularly the uh, those uh, administrative uh, kind of agencies. Uh, but that's because you obey the law and you force them to obey the law. Is that it? Well, yes, right and, and uh, uh, moreover, uh, I take the side of my constituents, the, the, the people who have uh, provided me with my living for many years right. in Eureka County, uh, have uh, been good enough to uh, to allow me to do the work that I like mm -hmm. to do, and uh, I'll stand up to uh, to anyone in order to protect uh, those folks, their rights, and and their rights, certainly. right. And that's it was in I guess the crime bill where 
uh, was signed not too long ago where they're going to put the thousand or a hundred thousand new cops on the street. The federal government's going to provide. Well, give me your insight on that, or give them your insight. Uh, uh, my, uh, I think what I have to say about that, it, it's, it's noble uh, to say that we're going to provide 100,000 more police officers in the United States. And there are certainly communities uh, who, who need that help. There aren't enough uh, police officers in a lot of places. Fortunately, we don't have that situation in Eureka County. But <clears throat> what my concern is, uh, in regard to that, is that uh, that's done through uh, block grants, et cetera. And uh, so the federal government gets a lot of money together and they throw it at the problem, which they're kind of famous for doing. Uh, each time, or each one of those, uh, those police officers now is tied to that federal money. And my concern is that each time that, that a law enforcement administrator like myself takes federal dollars, and uh, frankly, I don't take any federal money uh, in regard to, uh, to those kind of uh, functions, uh, to uh, financing uh, salaries for police officers, because it places me in a position of having to, better yet, it, it places the federal government in a position to dictate the policy for my office to me. And that takes away that accountability that I have to my constituents, to the folks that elected me to office several times. And uh, uh, I don't think that the bureaucrats in Washington have the, the knowledge or the wisdom to administer law enforcement in Eureka County. Frankly, the you know, bottom line well, of the people of the various counties and the people of Eureka County particularly, um, of losing that control and having then no recourse uh, in regard to their their destiny mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, who are they going to hold accountable? Like some bureaucrat in Washington? We, we know that that doesn't work. Uh, the, the bureaucrats aren't responsible to anyone, right. uh, frankly. Um, I go right to the very first book of laws that was written in the state of Nevada for the territory in 1861. And I, I go to the uh, uh, the very first paragraph of the it's of right the uh, uh, the very first paragraph that absolutely adopts the common law in the state of Nevada. Right, and and I'd like to read it because it's it's there, and I and I will read it. It says even chapter one, section one of the laws of the territory territory of Nevada in the very first paragraph reads. The common law of England, so far as it is not repugnant to or inconsistent with, with the Constitution or laws of the United States or the laws of the Territory of Nevada, shall be the rule of decision in all courts of this territory. Furthermore, the laws of the Territory of Nevada were subse subsequent, subsequently ratified by the first Nevada legislature and remain in full force and effect today. This is this says Nevada is under common law. And I, I didn't just write that. I that is absolutely an excerpt from it, and that's right it from it. verbatim with the very first paragraph of the the laws of the territory of Nevada. Nevada wasn't even a state. The territory of Nevada. The very first paragraph says that Nevada adopts the the British or the English common law, and and truly the sheriff is a common law officer. Uh, you'll find him, as we discussed earlier, provided for nowhere in the uh, United States Constitution or the Constitution of the State of Nevada. Mm -hmm. His authority is assumed uh, under the common law. Uh, this is. A the reasons that has happened and one of the reasons in fact it's the underlying reason why we have so much chaos throughout the state of Nevada on this issue why people's property is being stolen right and left mm -hmm. and not only here but in other states throughout the West too why the BLM and the Forest Service 
are running over people right and left. The fundamental reason why that's happening is because we have a virtually, virtual total breakdown in the exercise of lawful jurisdiction by the state and the subdivisions, the counties. Right. We have sheriffs, and just like in the Raymond Yall case, you have a sheriff that any way you want to slice that, and a brand department aiding and abetting the theft. That's right. Now, this is a total breakdown of uh, any lawful structure in the state. I want to go back to. And that goes back to the aiding and abetting of this theft mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by sheriffs right. who were too limp-wristed to exercise their authority. That's right. DAs that take a powder when something like this comes down. You know when Ben Colvin's cattle were stolen here a few months ago? Yes. And we looked around for the sheriff and the district attorney in Nye County. <laughs> you know where they were? Fishing in Alaska until oh, really? things quieted down. Now, when you've got those kind of people in elected office, you're going to have case. I asked my sheriff, I said, if you took the same position with the bank over here across the street that you've taken with the livestock industry here in the county, and if you let it be known that a certain class of people could rob that, rob that bank any time they wanted to, right. how long do you think it would be till it was robbed? And robbed repeatedly. There. It's That's aiding it. and abetting the crime. Exactly. Yes. And as long as you have sheriffs, that again are, are too limp-wristed to exercise their lawful jurisdiction and authority. I know here several years ago, I was asked to speak to the Western States uh, Association of Sheriffs and Chiefs of uh, Police. And there was a sheriff from one of the Nevada counties came up to me and he said, I'm having all this trouble with the Forest Service, this, that, something else. And uh, I listened to him and I said, well, what you're going to have to do is exercise your lawful jurisdiction. You have the jurisdiction. You're the chief law enforcement officer in the county, the Forest Service has no law enforcement authority. You need to understand that and let them know it. That'll take care of your problem. Right. You know, he would never do that. He, he never would do it. The end result was the stealing of Raymond Yall's cattle. Okay. And where we have seen sheriffs that do nothing more than send them a simple letter and say, boys, I'm the sheriff. I'm the chief law enforcement officer in this county. Mm -hmm. And there's not going to be any impoundments, any theft of property uh, on your part. If any of that is done, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do it with a lawful court order or warrant. And if you have a problem in this county, you come to us with a war uh, court order or warrant, we'll serve it for you. But yeah. don't you go around asking like law enforcement officers, because you're not. And where we've had sheriffs do that, such as Clark County, such as Owyhee County, in uh, southern Idaho, and there's, mm -hmm. and there's some in Utah, there's one in Wyoming, one up in Wyoming where the sheriff put him in chains, took it to the Tenth Circuit to get him, and the Tenth Circuit upheld him and said he had, did just what he had the right to do. Right. So if we can put people in office or get these ones in office to stiffen their backbone enough to exercise their lawful authority, mm -hmm. this stuff will end. Right. Because where the sheriff stands up, this stuff ends. Sheriff, but evidently in Utah, there was a little lady that had her cattle seized by these, these same yahoos. The sheriff went down there and loaded up her cattle, drove them back home to her ranch, and they never messed with her no more. So again, part of the solution is, is for these local guys to stand up and be what we pay them to be. You know, that is so true. Because really the key in this is for sheriffs to stand up and exercise their lawful authority and quit going around to their handout for another grant, welfare grant from the, from the government. And there is no such thing as free money. Every time you take one of those grants, there's strings attached. And so, so many of these sheriffs have taken so many handouts that they are absolutely compromised and paralyzed as far as doing what they were elected to do. There, there is no... This is evil. And I have to remember back in 1843 when Alexis de Tocqueville came to America and he said, you know, I, I looked for the greatness of America. What was the secret to her greatness? And he went through several things. He looked at her Congress. He looked at her great uh, ships and trains and in commerce. He, he looked at the agricultural fields. He looked at the justice, the courts. He, but it wasn't until he went in the churches 
and he, he understood then that America was great because America is good. But then mm -hmm. he said, when America ceases to be good, America will cease to be great. And you know, it's up to every single one of us, not the government, not your congressman, not your sheriff, we can't even depend on them anymore, but it's up to us to, to take that stand and fight for our own rights we have to. and the rights of each other. I hope I've helped you by showing you the video entitled The Sheriff. The Sheriff does have a lot of power, but what if the Sheriff does the wrong thing? What if the Sheriff decides to follow orders and disarm you and everyone else? Well. The first thing to do is to know your rights. Here in America, we have a Bill of Rights, and in the Bill of Rights, there's Article 2, which reads, A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. So if your sheriff decides to start disarming people and people start going to court to fight for their rights and you're sitting on the jury, let's say they pass a law saying that you cannot have a certain firearm like a semi-automatic rifle that accepts high capacity magazines and someone is brought to court for having one of these rifles and you're sitting on the jury. If you know your rights, you will find the person not guilty. Oh, the judge is going to throw his hat on the floor or his black robe, whatever. Most probably don't have a hat on, but he's got a black robe, so he's going to pull it off, he'll throw it on the floor, and he'll stomp on it and say, you have to find him guilty because there's a law. Wait, whoa. What is the law? The Constitution, the Bill of Rights. We have a right to keep and bear arms, and it doesn't say any certain arms, so we have a right to keep and bear all arms. So you find that person innocent not guilty for having a rifle that your tyrant government, the tyrants in your government say that you cannot have. Find him not guilty. I've read this quote several times for you and I'm going to do it again by Albert Einstein. The world is a dangerous place to live, not because of the people who are evil, 
but because of the people who don't do anything about it. End quote. Here's a quote from Dr. Ron Paul. Let it not be said we did nothing. Think about that until next time. And until next time, may all your sons set set right. And may the good Lord bless you both day and night.